back. So today I'm going to look at these goals. Have I? It's Friday. Have I made my weekly goals? Um, I have done laundry and dishes, the vacuuming, the extra cleaning I want to do. I've almost got the bathrooms where I want them to be, um, which is not great, but it's they need remodeled, but it's the best they're going to get. Um, I've been making these videos and successfully putting them up every day. I've worked on the other two things. Um, got that birthday lunch in, and I threw a surprise birthday party for another friend yesterday. It's a tiny little one, but um, and I have parts of my gift for a friend who has a birthday next week. Lots of lots of friends' birthdays, and it's important to keep up with them because we need to show those people we love how much we treasure them. And I'm really trying to be intentional about my friendships this year and not let things slide. And it's hard. There's there's a lot to keep up with. So sometimes you have to prioritize and juggle, and that kind of leads me back that whole topic I said five seconds ago on goals. So why am I getting these goals? My husband has been very impressed with me getting these. Well, part of it is, of course, I'm not in grad school anymore uh, and I'm not tutoring. So I, I do have more free time, but I'm also, you remember, I'm keeping up with all those friends and keeping those important things uh, and getting the liturgy hours done every day. So it's not like I'm just sitting around and have all this free time, but I'm, I'm finding more opportunities to get my to-do list done in more creative ways. And part of that was doing my little litany and praying over my goal list absolutely, absolutely helped me. I am sure the Lord has given me many graces to help get me on this way. Um, but I will tell you another secret that I haven't shared so far. What do these goals mean to me? Are they just chores? And the thing that's part of the difference. So think of it this way. Uh, relatives like to say, you know, oh, say there's an elephant and there's three blind men, they come up on an elephant. One says it's really big and kind of wrinkly. And another one might say, oh no, it's really skinny and flexible. And another one might say, oh, it's really bristly and hairy. And they're all right because one's touching a leg, one's touching the trunk, and one's touching the tail. And are all these things true? Yes. Are they the truth? No. Because the truth about an elephant is parts of him are each of those things. Um, so relativists might say my truth, right? What is my truth? This is my truth. But that doesn't mean what you're saying is wrong. You might believe it, but is it really true? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and in these books, K.A. Smith goes a little more detail. Who's afraid of relativism and who's afraid of postmodernism? And he looks at these theories and why we reject them, but actually tries to look and see if there's lessons we can learn from them. And there are some. Um, we can't outright reject them, but in analyzing them, we might understand them better and why people are clinging to them. And we don't want to go to the extremist other end, perhaps, but um, it just helps us to talk to people who are thinking those ways instead. So goals. Yes, absolutely. I'm trying to do these chores. Uh, I actually like laundry, but the other ones I don't like. And I was dragging my feet and doing them. But these are this week's goals. These are like mini goals. Because this summer I realized, and I talked about friendships being super important to me. So I want to be sure that my house becomes more of a home and a place where my friends want to come. And maybe we can fellowship and do some Bible studies. So we haven't been able to do that because it's, it's kind of messy. And the kids that come for tutoring don't really mind. But I'm a little embarrassed about what it's like. Well, if that's my real goal that I want people to come over and be happy when they're here and be comfortable, then these goals aren't such a big deal. My goal is to make my house a warm and inviting place. And that's what I want to do. And because that's my mission, I can, these goals aren't so intimidating anymore. I'm also feeling a little bit better. I have a digestive disorder and I'm usually in a state of malnutrition. So depending on the day, I don't have the energy and the strength to kind of get everything done that I want. And maybe that's where the prayers come in. Um, I'm definitely taking more supplements as well and trying to eat better. I've been working really hard at this for a couple of years. And so hopefully now this is all coming together into one thing and I'm able to get more of this done so that I can open up my house and do more of the things that I really, really feel are my mission to do. So how about you? Does your family have a mission? I mean, we can get lost in the day-to-day -day goals. Like we're homeschooling and this is the subjects we have to do today and this is the pages we have to do today let's get it done check 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 and it's easy to forget that your mission is to help 
bring your kids to God and to teach them a love of learning about his creation and world, right? So when that's your goal, it makes the other things seem a little more palatable, right? A spoonful of sugar. But also, so a mission can change. You can sit down with your family and write a yearly mission. Now, kids should all get some input, but that doesn't mean they get to write it. Um, you and your husband should really, or if you're a single parent, you take control of it, but absolutely let your kids say what they want and why, why that's important to them. It's important to hear them, and you might change how you're doing things a little bit based on their input, but absolutely the parents need to be the ones finishing the, the mission statement. And I'm not saying you have to paint it and put it in a wall, but some people do. And would it change throughout the year? Maybe. Um, if you're going through an illness, a sudden illness, or somebody has an accident, financial distress, sure, you may change your mission, but on the other hand, that mission you already have written might be what sustains you through that terrible time. That you're keeping your eyes on the prize and remembering that the goal is to spend more, more time with the Lord and grow closer and bring your spouse and your children to God. Um, and if you don't have a spouse and kids, bring your friends to God. <laughs> so we're just trying to get that done. So that's a mission. And it's not really hard to do. You can sit and do one. So right now, my mission personally is to make my house more of a home where my husband and son feel comfortable having their friends over and that it's much less stress on them um, and makes it a haven for my family as well. So that's my mission, to make this home into a haven where people are comfortable and we can are then free to get closer to God because we're not so stressed out and can't get things done, right? So that's my mission. My husband and I might sit down soon and and really talk about what ours is. It's confusing. We had a son that went off to college and we got used to that and, and started living a different way, but then he, he came back. And so maybe we need to sit down as a family and write a new one because it's it's been a tough adjustment period. Although it's been going on for a while, we thought it was more temporary, so we didn't write a mission and it's not as temporary as we thought. So we probably just need to sit down as a family and look at that, figure out what our goals are and what our mission is. So figure out our mission and then we can come up with goals and we can break those goals down into little pieces like, like my little weekly list here. And then the, that, I want them to become action items, right? That you can check off. So you have a mission, like maybe a whole family mission, and then each person could have goal and you can have mini goals or short-term goals under that and then action items that are a nice checklist that you can check off. Um, that makes it easier. Even if it's something that you're doing every day, make a spot where you can put a little box for every day. And this had that, remember I showed you in here, I have some that are third, little 31 bubbles, so I can check it off each day if it's something that I'm doing each day. And that'll help me form a good habit in doing that. So again, so mission and goals, action items. And that's what we're getting done. And it's not just getting things done. Remember, because we're checking off that action item, but remember, it, it does feel good to check those boxes off. But that's not, it's not the overarching thing. So the overarching thing then is to make my home a haven and to help bring my spouse and my family to God would, would be the mission. So I'm working on all of those. I hope you are too. You can see I've been doing Oxio Divina. I won't traumatize you, but Jeremiah is kind of an intense one. Why is Jeremiah intense? Remember? In our Bible, the tab is like light blue. If you're doing the Great Adventure Bible system, it should explain to you why Jeremiah is being a little harsh sometimes. Why is he being harsh? It's important. And Israel had this problem too, right? Continually, they have mission to bring themselves close to God. God wanted to love them as a son, as a daughter. And they were just not hitting those goals, were they? And so there had to be some consequences and they had to face up to them and take responsibility and start making, are you going to hit your action items? But God's like, I know you say you want this, but you're not hitting your goals. What are the action items you need to do? And for some of us too, maybe your goals, are your goals realistic? We talked about relativism. Let's talk about realistic quick. So is it realistic for me that I can do all these heavy duty lifting chores all the time? It's not. Um, when we went to the store today, my son helped me carry in the groceries. That really wears me out. I'm so grateful that he's able to do that. Also, I don't drive. So it was awesome that he drove us to the store. We got the shopping done. He brought everything in and I could deal with it once it was in the house. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help and make sure you're asking the right people. Like I can ask him to do some things, but other things I, they just aren't his, in his wheelhouse, in his townhouse. So you've got to stop and think, 
I need something done. Am I asking the right people? And remember, there are resources out in the community that are willing to help you. So try and reach out to them because it's okay to need help sometime, right? And have others because they're trying to get to heaven too. So maybe they would love to be able to serve you and to spend time with you. Some of my fondest memories as a child were doing Meals on Wheels with my mom. Um, I've talked to people about that before. That was a big influence on my life. There was a woman who was a storyteller and she lived to me. I don't know what the house actually looked like, but I thought it was an enchanted cottage on the edge of the woods and flowers growing all up in my mind. And she would tell me the most beautiful stories in the world. But we were really bringing her a hot meal every day. So she was serving even as she was being served. Give people that opportunity. Reach out. So remember, what are goals? What are missions? What is relativism? Go ahead. Look it up. Don't be afraid to look it up and study it. Because people say, throw that word around all the time. What can we learn from it? We can learn from people with that opinion. Keep that dialogue open and keep that dialogue open with your list too, with your mission statement. Keep working on it and the goals. Are these realistic? Are these things I can do? Maybe I need to break them down and spread them out a little bit more. Or maybe I'm being lazy and I can, don't be Israel, right? Don't be Israel and Jeremiah. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Repent if you need it, right? And if not, keep moving towards the Lord. I hope these videos are helping you. If they are, please like and subscribe. Um, share them if you want. Subscribe does seem to have different options. If you hit that little bell, whether it sends you an email or whether it just gives you a little dot on your, your app or whatever you're watching on. Have a blessed weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day. I'll see you in the fall.